Hello, this is Judy Swigert. I'm the superintendent here at Greater Latrobe. Um, today, in today's paper, which is today is actually Wednesday, uh, September the 19th. Uh, so if you're watching this later, you know that it's the day that in the Latrobe Bulletin, the headline read that Greater Latrobe's junior and senior high school did not make AYP. And the article does a nice job of describing what AYP is. And uh, it references that it means annual yearly progress. And basically that comes out on an annual basis and tells us whether we've made appropriate progress from year to year at various levels. And the two schools that were recognized as being in warning is the junior high school and the senior high school. And number one, I wanted to let all of you know um, that it is something that we take of great importance and we have been actively and will continue to actively look at the data and determine where uh, we need to improve as far as curriculum as well as working with particular subgroups of students. Uh, there is a lot of detail and um, so much detail that it would be impossible to describe to all of you how AYP is calculated and the various ways that you can make AYP. Um, but I'll give you an example at the junior high school. Um, there are approximately a thousand students in that building. Uh, the only grades that are tested is 7th and 8th. Ninth grade is not a tested grade. And in that grade or in that uh, group of students, um, they take PSSAs at both levels. Those are the scores that create AYP for the junior high school. Within a tested group, if you have more than 40 students uh, that fall into a particular category, they need to make uh, a different score, so to speak, overall score in order to have the building make AYP. So for example, at the junior high school, we have more than 40 students that are in, that have uh, IEPs, which is Individualized Education Plans. So because that's considered a subgroup for our junior high school, um, we did not make AYP because that subgroup of students did not make adequate yearly progress. If we had less than 40 students in that subgroup, we may have made AYP, but because we have over 40. You may ask why it's 40, and truthfully, I can't probably tell you, um, but um, the bottom line is, is 40 is the cutoff. So that's the junior high picture. So you can naturally understand that the junior high staff um, and administrators are looking closely at that segment of the population where we missed uh, certain curricular items and how we need to improve there. Because obviously our goal is to not, or to make AYP next year. The senior high school is slightly different in that the only group that's tested in the senior high school is our juniors. There are no tests that they take from 8th to 11th grade, and 11th grade, traditionally, they've taken a PSSA, and we always get the results back before their senior year, and they can retake them their senior year if they haven't met uh, advanced or proficient, which are the guidelines from the state. However, when they retake the test, it doesn't change our AYP score. So last year, our high school, and there are targets, and those targets are set in math and in language arts. We overall at the high school did not meet the target for math in the senior high school. But in addition, we had a subgroup, and that subgroup was called, uh, they define it as ED, economically disadvantaged, which means we had more than 40 students in that subgroup, and that was another area that we did not meet annual yearly progress. So there again, when you think of that, what data tells us what we need to do is to look at our mathematics curriculum, and obviously it's not just at the high school, but throughout, as well as that population of students and how we can support them even more than we presently do to make sure that they can make adequate yearly progress. The junior high school, or the junior year PSSA test is not going to be given anymore. Um, last year was the last one, and that test is being replaced with the Keystone exams. And they are, uh, have been piloted over the last few years, but this will be the first year that all juniors and our annual yearly progress will be determined by the keystones. The keystones are in three areas, mathematics, language arts, and biology. 
Biology will not count this year for annual yearly progress, but it counts towards participation. So very clearly, this is a huge change, and it's not an only a change for Greater Latrobe, it's a change for across the state. Um, but it again poses some challenges for us with our curriculum, and we know that. So what I wanted to let everyone know is where that stood, as well as to understand that um, we realize and understand and are moving forward um, with looking at our data, which is the most important thing we can do, and how we can improve these scores. So I wanted to assure everyone um, that when you are in warning status, which is where we're at, we don't have to do any type of reporting to the state or anything like that. But obviously, if we would continue not making AYP, that is something we would have to do. Um, the school district overall did meet AYP, um, so you need to understand that as well. It's an important piece. Um, but again, um, it doesn't make light of the fact or discount where we need to improve. Um, again, as I do every month, but certainly with this, you know, if you have any concerns or questions um, about the whole process of PSSAs and why we're at where we are, not only here at Greater Latrobe but across the state, please feel free to give us a call. Um, there's a, so much detail to it um, that we would certainly share um, that information with anyone that would have an interest in that. So thank you very much. Um, thank you.